Hi everyone, this lesson is for geometry students. This is your chapter four practice test. So just a note included on this test that you're going to be having our chapter three similarity and chapter four trigonometry questions. So let's get started. First question says find the value of x. So for this problem here, uh, we know that because these two lines here are these two lines are parallel that the angles are congruent so for example that angle here and this angle here these two angles would be congruent similarly if we broke apart these two triangles right here and i had the smaller triangle and then the larger triangle i would know that not only is this angle here congruent to this angle here but also the top angles are congruent. So this is definitely, there's, the two triangles are similar by angle, angle, similarity, uh, property, and then we can either make a ratio by the separating the two triangles, or we can make a ratio by just saying 12 is to 16 as x is to 20. And then we would cross multiply, we get 16x, is equal to 12 times 20. Um, dividing by 16, now you can multiply these out since you're all using calculators and you can do that. Um, x equals, and then 16 I'm gonna break down to four times four. Four divides into 20, five times four divides into 12, three times, three times five is 15. So you can do this this way, or if you split up the triangles, that would be 12 and that would be x. And then this side here, um, would be 28 for this long side. And then this side here would be x plus 20. So you would go 12 is to 28 as this little part here, x, is to uh, x plus 20. And then you would cross multiply um, and you would get 12 times x plus 20 is equal to 28x. And let's fix that. And then distribute or, uh, yeah, I would distribute. So I'm going to get 12x plus 12 times 20, which is 240, is equal to 28x. Um, I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides, so minus 12x. And I get 240 is equal to 16x. And then 240 divided by 16 gives us 15. So we get the same answer. Uh, regardless, but there's two different ways that you could do this. Okay, pick your way. For this problem here, you're solving for x. So we do actually need to separate these two triangles because you can't do it the same way as the other one. So separating the top triangle out from the bottom triangle, and again, these are similar because these two lines are parallel. And because of that, you get the angle-angle similarity, which looks like this, angle-angle similarity and that's how you would write that um three is to seven so my ratio um my scale factor is, is three to seven as five is to and then the bottom which is x so we'd say three is to seven as five is to x we're going to cross multiply we get three x is equal to 35 and then x equals 35 divided by three um, which is, let's see, 35 divided by 3 is going to give you about 11.67. So 11.67. So this would be my answer, unless I left it as 35 over 3. Um, for this problem here, it says decide if the two triangles are similar. If they are similar, state the similarity theorem. So for two triangles to be similar, and by the example that they gave us, it looks like if they are similar, it would be a side angle side similarity. However, for this to happen, not only do the angles need to be congruent, which they are, the sides have to be proportional. So two things have to happen. The angles, the angles have to be congruent and also this must happen that the sides are uh, proportional. So if that's the case, then the, then the two triangles are similar and they would be similar by side, angle, side. But in the meantime, let's check to see if they're uh, proportional. So we'd go 
six, and this is the smaller side to the bigger side, and this is the smaller side to the bigger side. So I would I could say six is to nine as eight is to 12, or I could say six is to eight, so small side is to small side as uh, nine is to 12. And if I cross multiply, I should get exactly the same thing. So six times 12 is 72. And does that equal eight times nine, also 72? Yes. So therefore, yes, these two triangles are similar and they are similar by side angle side similarity. For this problem here, it says determine whether triangle ABC uh, is similar to triangle EDC. If the two triangles are similar, state the similarity. So these two triangles here, um, you've got an angle here congruent to an angle. So that's an angle congruent to an angle. Now, because these two sides are parallel, that means that this angle here would be congruent to this angle here. And that would be angle angle similarity. So I already have enough. I have two angles because automatically the third angle has to be congruent to the other angle. And for two triangles to be similar by angle angle similarity, you just need two angles, but no sides. So this would be a yes. Um, the two triangles are similar and the reason is angle angle similarity. For this problem, it says decided the two triangles are similar. Um, if they're similar, they state the similarity. So for these two, obviously I have no sides. There's only three options for stating if two triangles are similar. There's the option for angle angle similarity, side angle side similarity, and side 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 similarity. So, so I don't have any sides that are could be possibly be proportional, so that's out. Again, no sides, so that's out. So the only one this could be is if I have two angles that are congruent because in a triangle if you have two angles that are congruent automatically the third angle is going to be congruent if two angles are already congruent so what we need to do is we need to say well uh, what's 180 minus whatever 50 plus 78 is and for this triangle here again 180 minus whatever 50 plus 53 is so we know that 50 plus 78, so 50 plus 78 is 128. So 180 minus 128, okay, so minus 180 gives me 52 degrees. So that means this angle right here is 52. And already I can see that these are probably not congruent, These they're not similar because the 50s aren't gonna match up. Because see, the angles have to be corresponding also, besides the angles being corresponding, they have to be congruent. And in this case, this one's 52, and that's 53, and they don't match. And so just to, just to verify again, so if I took 180 and I subtracted 50 and then also subtracted 53, over here, I'm actually going to get 77 degrees, which, again, is not congruent to 78. So this would be a definite no, the two triangles are not similar. Um, for this problem here, we're asking, all squares are similar. Um, this is true or false? Um, yes, all squares are similar. You've got, because that means that all four sides are congruent and all four angles are congruent, also they're right. But for all rectangles, so this is yes, true. Uh, all rectangles are similar. This is a no, because they're not, um, doesn't there's no sort of proportion to them this is regular any type of regular polygon are though any type are always going to be similar any type of regular so um, you could say uh, pentagons you could say hexagons they are always going to be similar if they are a regular hexagon or a regular pentagon um, or a regular triangle but rectangles um, are not regular, so they are not always similar, so this would be false. Um, all triangles are similar, that would be no. The only way that a triangle would be similar is if it was a regular triangle, and if it was a regular triangle, that would mean it would be equilateral and equiangular, and then those are all similar because all the angles are congruent, right? 60 degrees. 
Um, but I could have, let's say, a right triangle here, and then I could have just, say, an isosceles triangle or equilateral triangle here, definitely not similar. So this also um, is false. Uh, for this problem here, it says, now this is back to chapter four, um, that all, all those questions from before, those were all previous from chapter three, which you do need to remember. Um, and you're gonna see some questions very similar to the ones that I just went over. Um, find, find X, so round to the nearest whole number. So X is here, um, put yourself at the angle that you wanna be at. So you could be here, or you could also put yourself up here because you could say, well, we know that this angle here is got to be 75 uh, degrees because these two angles here have to add up to be 90. All right, so you would just subtract. And anyway, so if I put myself here, then I would use tangent. So because that uses opposite over adjacent. <clears throat> so that's opposite. This is adjacent. Another way of thinking of opposite over adjacent is the rise over the run. And this is, remember, our tangent ratio. So anyway, tangent of the angle, the angle always comes after the word. So tangent of 15 is equal to 14 over x. And in order to find x, I'm going to cross multiply. And I'm going to get x times whatever tangent of 15 degrees is equal to 14. And then I'm going to get x equals 14 divided by tangent of 15 degrees. Make sure you use parentheses in this unless you're using that as a decimal. But you're going to go 14 divided by tangent of 15 degrees. And also make sure that you're in degrees and not your calculator is in degrees and not radians. Um, so I ended up getting, let's see, nothing. Let's see, I got an error. Okay, so let's see, tangent of 15 is about 0.267 and I'm going to go 14 divided by that answer and I get about 52.2 round to the nearest whole number so that's 52. So it's about 52 and that's what x is. So we found x is 52. Okay um, just a note if I had put myself on this side up here instead I would have used 75 degrees and if I did that I would have said tangent of 75 degrees um, is equal to x over 14. And a lot of people like to use this method a little better is just to make sure that the variable is always on top because, because all you have to do is just cross multiply and there's no dividing you know, involved. So you would say 1 times x, which is x, is equal to 14 times tangent of 75 degrees. And so again, if you just click on, you select tangent of 75, and then you multiply that by 14, you're gonna get 52.424 again. So rounds that off to about 52. So just keep that in mind. There all, there's always two ways you can do these problems and just put yourself at a different spot. Um, for this problem here, we wanna find X. And so here we are, and for this value here to find x, you know, we're going to use arc tangent because any time that you are trying to find um, an angle and any time you want to find an angle, you're always going to use arc tangent. But in this case, just keep a note that you should already recognize what kind of a triangle this is because the two sides are congruent. All right. That means that their opposite angles have to be congruent also. And if we know that the two opposite angles have to add up to be 90 degrees, because that's also 90 and that adds up to be 180, if we know that these two are 90 degrees, that means that if both of these angles are congruent, that they have to be uh, 45 degrees. And so you should know that that's gonna happen no matter what. Every time you see a triangle, where you have sides that are congruent, the angle is always going to be 45 degrees here and here. All right. Now, just saying, let's just work this out and, and just work it out so that we can say, okay, hey, I can do this by just remembering that they're 45 degrees, or I could do this by um, solving the problem. So I could put myself here 
and I would say tangent of the angle, which we're gonna call x theta. And, and for me, I like to use theta, so I'm just gonna actually take the x out and just say theta is equal to the rise over the run, or you would say the opposite side over the adjacent, so that's five over five, which is one, right? So tangent of theta equals one. So when is tangent of theta equal to one? Well, when x is 45 degrees, so here we go. Theta is equal to arc tangent of one. And so plug it into your calculator, you're gonna get this, 45 degrees. So theta is equal to 45 degrees, and this in this case, theta is the same thing as x degrees, okay? For this problem here, uh, it says find y. And so you are gonna put yourself um, at the origin and you're going to make this little right triangle here out of you being here at the origin. And so they're looking for this value, which is the rise, which is the y, okay? And so going across, that's 14. So you go over 14 and then up. So you've got um, the right, this is the run and this is the right, so y over 14. Okay, so we wanna find y. So this is again tangent, we're not using the hypotenuse, we don't wanna find the hypotenuse, we're just done. So we're gonna go tangent of 35 degrees is equal to y over 14. And we're gonna cross multiply, I'm gonna get y equals 14 times tangent of 35 degrees. And I'm gonna say tangent of 35 degrees equals, and I'm gonna multiply that by 14, and I get 9.8. It says round your, so y is approximately 9.8. It says round your answer to the nearest whole number. So the nearest whole number is actually gonna be 10. So y is approximately 10, okay? For this problem, it says, <clears throat> if two polygons are similar, then which of the following must be true? The corresponding site, so here we have two polygons. I'm just gonna use two triangles for our, um, example. It says, if two polygons are similar, then which of the following must be true? The corresponding sides are proportional. Definitely. That's a yes. The perimeters are equal. That's not going to happen because we have different sizes. So even though the scale factors are the same, the perimeters are not equal. If I add up, you know, all the sides, I'm not going to get the same value. So for example, if I said this was three and I multiplied by two, so that's six. And I said that's five and I multiplied by two, that's 10. And I said this is four and I multiplied by two, that's eight, right? So these two triangles we know are similar because they're three is to six, watch, three is to six as five is to 10. So that's uh, 30 is equal to 30. We know the sides are proportional. Remember, you do actually have to go all the way around, but we do know that that's gonna happen all the way around, okay? Because I multiplied by two all the way around. But what you're looking at is not necessarily whether the scale factor, which is three is to six or one half, right? We know that the scale factors are the same. They're not asking that. They're asking whether the perimeters are equal. So three plus five is eight, eight plus four is 12. So the perimeter of this shape is 12. So 10 plus eight is 18 and 18 plus six is 24. So what we have here is definitely not the same perimeter. Um, the corresponding sides are congruent. Uh, this three corresponds to this six. In no way are those going to be congruent. So this is a no. Um, because if they were the same value, then they would be congruent triangles and not necessarily similar, they'd just be congruent. Um, the corresponding angles are congruent, absolutely. All the angles have to be the same. If this is um, 60 degrees, that, well actually this is 90 degrees, but this also would have to be 90 degrees. If this is 50 degrees, that would have to be 50, et cetera. They're, the angles have got to be equal, so this would be a yes. So my answer to this problem, uh, which of the following was, would be true? It's only gonna be number one and number four. Uh, for this problem here, a tower cast a shadow, so we're going to make a tower, and it casts a shadow. Remember, shadows are on the ground, and so we've got three, 35 meters long, and this is my tower. 
uh, when the angle of elevation, so the angle of elevation is the angle that you're looking up. So that's the angle that you're looking up is 22 degrees. So we're looking at this being 22 degrees. We know this is right because that's going to be perpendicular. The tower should be, if it's built right, right, should be uh, perpendicular with the ground. Um, how high is the tower? So that's unknown here. Draw a diagram round to the nearest hundredth. So you're going to put yourself here because remember, you're looking up the angle of elevation. That's where you are from the ground on the shadow up. So we're going to use tangent again because that's opposite over adjacent. So we're going to say tangent. This is my opposite side. This is my adjacent side. So tangent of the angle, remember the angle always comes next, is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side, which is 35. You're going to cross multiply. X equals 35 times tangent of 22. And we're going to get an answer. We're going to plug in for tangent. And I'm just going to just show you one um, with the calculator. Um, tangent of 22 times 35. So let's do that. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to clear this screen. Make sure you're in degrees here. I see that I'm in degrees here. So I'm going to go tangent of 22, and that's going to equal 0 0.404. And then I'm going to multiply that by 35. And I'm going to go equals, and I get about 14. Let me make sure I've got the right tangent of 22 times 35. I have that right. Um, so my answer is 14.14. And so that means that this angle, 14.14, send round to the nearest um, hundredth. Let's just make sure that we didn't have a number behind that. One, four, and then one is not going to do that. Okay, so we're good. And so this would be our answer. Now, keep in mind also, once you have this number here, right, you can always use the Pythagorean theorem to find the hypotenuse, okay? And then that might be a question if you um, want to find, let's say, the perimeter, right? So you'll see something like that also on like your final exam at the end of the semester. Um, last question here, we have Tarzan standing at the top of the cliff. There he is right there. Um, he looks up at an angle of elevation of 32 degrees. So he's looking up from where he's at, it's kind of sitting down there a little bit. Um, there he is. And to see a super tall tree, that's the super tall tree. He looks down at an angle of depression. So this angle is looking down, right? That angle looking down um, is 72 degrees. Now remember, whether you're looking up or you're looking down, that's always off of a horizontal. See this right here, this line? That's my horizontal. Um, to see Jane, there's Jane. There she is, standing at the bottom of the tree. Tarzan looks directly across from him, and he realizes that the tree is only about 150 feet away. So this length right here is 150 feet. Um, Tarzan wonders how tall this super tall tree is. That's a good question. Uh, find the height of the tree. But what it looks like to me is I'm going to have to find the height of the tree in two parts. So I'm going to call this X and I'm going to call this part of the tree down here. I'm going to call that Y. And again, we know this is perpendicular here, which means this is my hypotenuse and I don't care about that. We don't want that. So what we're going to do is for the small triangle right up here, Okay, we're going to try to find this height. And so we know that's 32. We know that's 150. So we're going to say opposite over adjacent. So we're going to say tangent of 32 equals x over 150. I'm going to cross multiply x equals 150 times tangent of 32. So we're going to go tangent of 32 equals, and I'm going to multiply that by 150. And that's 93.7. It says round to the nearest tenth. So 93.7. So X is about uh, 93.7 feet up. And then now let's find Y. So to find Y, we're going to use this triangle here. Again, I'm going to use opposite, which is Y, over adjacent, which is 150. So we have tangent of 72 is equal to Y over 150. I'm going to cross multiply. There's a 1 under here. So Y times 1 is Y equals 150 times tangent of 72. So tangent of 72 is equal to 
077. I'm going to take that number, multiply it by 150, and I'm going to get 461.65. So y is approximately 461.65, and it says round to the nearest tenth. So that means this 5 brings this 6 up. So that'll be 461.7 plus 93.7. And so add those two up. That's your answer. So we're going to get 461.7, add 93.7, and I end up get 555. So 555.4. Uh, and so that's the height of the tree, 555.4 feet. Cool. Okay. Uh, good luck on your exam. That's all there is to it. Um, thanks so much for watching. I hope it helped you.